Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. A judgment of the Gauteng Division of the High Court of South Africa has exposed the Department of Mineral Resources as an irrational institution with a high degree of incompetence. Martin Kremer joins me in studio to discuss the judgment. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. What led to Aquila Steel South Africa in the case against six re respondents, which include the DMR and triple state-owned Pan-African Mineral Development Company. You know, this is a very sad story. Here we in South Africa need jobs. We need investment and foreign investment is magnificent. You should just roll out that red carpet and let that money come in. I mean, really, especially on a a wholesome project that is going to then bring in more people to build a mine. Now we have a Department of Mineral Resources that sabotages our own economy. We are paying these civil servants and they are damaging our reputation as a foreign investment. So, And it takes a long time to restore that. But on top of it, when people do bring investments in, they trip them up. And they trip them up in such a stealthy way that it really should sadden everyone who's a taxpayer. Now we've had this situation before in manganese and Aquila Steel is around the manganese assets again. These manganese assets are highlighting very stealthy actions by the Department of Mineral Resources and I'm glad that the uh, judgment from the High Court has come through because that then just confirms all our thinking that we've been watching, observing, and how, you know, we even recorded that a, 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 an official of the department took a mining right application and put it in his bottom drawer because he didn't want this to go through. And he admitted it in a private meeting when we as journalists, and I was sitting there, recorded this, we put the story into Mining Weekly, he then proceeded to sue us. And we said, but we've got a tape recording of you saying this. Then he backed off. So it shows you that he wanted to get this through to an audience that he thought was on his side. And unbeknown to him, there were journalists sitting in the, the audience. It was actually a, a bioscope situation, so it was quite dark. So you couldn't actually see the people. And this is now going decades ahead of the Aquila case. So. We have a foreign investor come in here and become so disillusioned because they put in 156 million rand to, to delineate a real asset in the form of minerals, manganese, that are worth billions of rands. And when they try and proceed to then extract these, because all that other 156 million is put at risk, not at South Africa's risk, at the risk of these foreign investors coming in at that stage from Australia. They proceed then to get frozen and they can't move because of the stealthy and surreptitious way in which the Department of Mineral Resources, without telling many people, was trying to freeze up a massive area of, of the Northern Cape for not one national state, and we're talking about a, an attempt at nationalization here, but three national states. And it goes back, it just shows you when colonization uh, uh, means that, you know, uh, a plus, they suddenly rush and try and freeze up this thing on the basis of Cecil, what Cecil John Rhodes did. So these were three national states, not only South Africa, but Zimbabwe and uh, Zambia working together and not even announcing this properly and then proceeding to say, no, this is our area but not even taking the trouble of converting those old order rights to new order rights. So behaving abominably and then just affording rights, even though everyone in the court admitted it was irrational. So this is the sort of atmosphere we've got now, you know, with the Quiller Steel coming in, hitting its head uh, on uh, an attempt at mine nationalization, which was so inept and so amateurish and so bad for South Africa you know, that people then sit back and say, hey, this is not the place to invest in. Uh, you know, Africa is a big place. We'll, we'll go elsewhere. Uh, the world is a big place. <laughs> we'll go elsewhere. We can't risk our money here. And who suffers? The people of South Africa. You know, these people coming now from a trick, looking for a job, 
the economy is not moving because of the ineptitude of people whose salaries the taxpayers are paying. I mean, this is really shocking. And how did the judge go about describing how he believed the DMR was destroying South Africa's reputation as an investment destination? You know, this judge really spelled it out and, and he did it in a very calm and collective way. And now this is the second judge to tear a strip off the Department of Mineral Resources in as many months. We know that the Labor Court uh, uh, judge said to them, you know, stop breaking, um, uh, what was the headline? You, you, you crack, uh, using a sledgehammer to crack a nut, you know. Stop using sledgehammers. You know, they were stopping, again, resisting economic activity in South Africa. When at, at a time when the gold price is rising, you know, you need to assist to get things going. If there is a safety issue, deal with that safety issue. But what the Department of Mineral Resources were doing in the case of Anglo Gold <coughs> Shanty is a similar to what uh, uh, would be a traffic department stopping the entire network of freeway from Pretoria to Vereniging because a car has got hit from behind on an off-ramp in Bromfontein. You know, they stop the entire system at a time when mines are trying to produce more. I mean, you can see the production figures now. Our production figures have shrunk again. At a time when we need them, as I'm saying, these new people are coming into the economy. You need growth. You need to create employment. They are creating unemployment because of some mindless way of dealing with safety regulations. We all believe in safety, but it must be proportional. You know, and that freeway uh, vision gives you the idea of what they're doing underground. They stop the entire mine because of a, a, an infringement. We're all worried about infringements and you know, we're all worried about injuries, but you don't do it that way. And if you freeze the whole mine, you actually make that mine more unsafe because mines need to be worked all the time. But they seem to have no concern for that. And so again, we see the situation where the second judge now in the high court has illustrated that the way these people are going about things is going to put investors off. Uh, and, and that is absolutely um, uh, needs to, <laughs> these people need to be educated because not only do we want that foreign investment to come in, it's so wonderful. You know, they, this money comes into your country, but what they do creates more money to come in because they export. These are export businesses and you've got to get that foreign exchange. So foreign exchange is fantastic. It helps us to strengthen the rand and make sure that we can drive around in fancy cars and all the other things we do because we need to import. Uh, but you've got to export, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're going to import. And I think that uh, this judgment is, again, so important. And, and it's a pity that, that the courts are running the country. You know, here you have the courts having to run the country because the government is not running it. And uh, the parts of the government that are, are running it into the ground. And what did the uh, judgment say in terms of the outcome of Aquila's mineral rights? Yes, I mean, here is a situation where the judge is sitting on this. <laughs> He's seeing that they should have had these rights, but they didn't get them because of a att botched attempt at nationalization of the mining industry. Botched, totally botched. And he's saying, okay, but if I now allow these guys to handle this again, are they going to handle it? I mean, for years, they've been unable to sort out problems. They allow problems to drag on. So how, as a, a judge of the high court, can I just sit back and say to them, well, you must fix it now. You know, you must fix it. When you can see they don't fix it. <laughs> they don't fix anything. So he said, I will do your job. I'm going to take over your job. I'm going to grant Aquila these licenses. I'm not leaving it to you. And that may be a lesson for South Africa because in Chile, the government does not grant the mining licenses. The courts grant the mining licenses to avoid you know, this sort of uh, discrimination against certain companies, as we're seeing is, is quite blatant here. And when I speak to people about Chile, I mean, I, I spoke to uh, the head of one of the biggest mining companies in the world, 
who happened to be a South African. And I said to him, how can you not invest in South Africa? You are a South African. You know what is under the ground here. You know how valuable it is. Why are you putting all your billions into Chile? So he says, sit down, let me explain. He says, when I go to Chile, the government rolls out a red carpet for me. He said, when I come to South Africa, the government rolls out red tape and I trip all over the place. Now that's why I go to Chile. Now again, this has been happening for a long time and it's been the Department of Mineral Resources and the Department of Mineral Resources has changed leadership so many times that it's now getting worse and worse and worse. So we're heading for a situation where we've got $2.5 trillion worth of value in the ground, but it is worth naught because the real trick is to get that out. And instead of us saying, okay, we've got the world's best resources here, better than Russia, better than, than Australia, which are second and third, but way ahead of them, we're not going to get anything out of this except illegal mining, which you see down the road, because people will not come here. Because we don't, we actually hurt their businesses. We hurt them. Never mind allow them to help us. And again, I think of those young kids coming out of matriculation, no growth in the economy, where they're going to go. A lot of, I mean, you can see the retrenchments in the mining industry. Our mining industry's production, just look at it, down, shrunk. Look at Australia, up, even in this difficult time. So very badly mani managed. This, this whole industry has been very badly managed. And what do you think the judgment um, means for the DMR going forward? I think it's, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Because, I mean, uh, you, you notice that the, the new uh, mines minister seemed to be more interested in financial affairs uh, than he was in his own mining industry. Uh, he's then become gazette happy. And also by stealth, he tries to change the mining charter. Now, we can remember when people sat down for that mining charter in Pretoria, it was really an earnest way of bringing previously disadvantaged into the industry, allowing them to invest in that industry, but bringing them in in a way that it was very discounted to get them in. They didn't have to pay the real value, but they wanted those people in it. And we've seen some fantastic results. I mean, look at, you know, Patrice uh, Matsepa's um, company arm, and, and we saw with Exoro, I mean, um, we saw fantastic results there from, from that action and it was a very important action but instead uh, of allowing this to really play itself out fully and it has that ups and downs they want to change the goal they want to make it more difficult and then you have you have some of the people going against the national policy because the national policy says one thing and then Eskim will come along and say another thing and this really confuses the issue totally and who knows what the outcome is going to be, because I don't think it's going to be positive for our economy, because the mining industry is a very important driver of economic activity. There are so many linkages, side linkages, forward linkages, backward linkages, even you know food linkages for the mining industry. It's, it's a massive industry, and it has floated many boats in the past. And what they're doing is that they're lowering the level of the water and sinking all the boats. And I think this is why this judgment and the one before it is so important for South Africa. Thanks, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.